Strastvoeva. And welcome to episode 13 of my Soviet Union history vlog. Um, and in this episode, we're thinking about Brezhnev and his approach to the economy. Having considered already um, Khrushchev last time, remember that these two kind of come together uh, as, a, as a topic in, um, in the Edexcel format. It's post-Stalin, all the way from 53 to 85. So it's quite likely that you would get, even though you could get a whole question on Brezhnev and his economic approach, you probably don't want one, um, and you probably won't get one. You'll probably be comparing him to Khrushchev, I would think. Um, or perhaps considering success and failures, again, of the Khrushchev and Brezhnev era. Remember that uh, the headline here is changing priorities. Um, and uh, as well, the thing they pick out is the limited attempt at reform after 64, which will certainly be able to evidence um, an economic climb and the, the limited effect of the reforms um, of both Khrushchev and Brezhnev, but today obviously thinking about Brezhnev. So, as I said last time, uh, between 56 and 1956 and 1958, things went pretty well for the uh, Soviet economy. Um, but after that, growth started to slow. And really, by the end of the 60s, you're looking at stagnation um, uh, all the way through to all the way through the 70s um, and up to the 80s. And that's partly because, um, it's for a number of reasons, but partly because of Brezhnev as a leader liked to uh, just kind of keep things very stable. So he undid Khrushchev's um, reforms, which were a little bit too radical for him, including the Virgin Lands scheme, probably a good idea on balance. He re-centralised the economy, going winding the clock back to the sort of Stalinist era, um, and even reverted to five-year plans rather than Khrushchev's crazy idea of having a seven-year plan. So um, let's have a look at agriculture and industry um, independently. So agriculture, um, no major innovations <clears throat> in the agriculture sector. However, um, by 1976, um, a quarter of all investment in the Soviet Union was in agriculture. And fertilisers are your best example of, of where that money was going. So there were efforts to try and channel some more money into agriculture and to try and boost the effectiveness of what they were doing there. It did lead to a rise in production, uh, but also um, the same period saw a decline in productivity. So more was being um, produced, but uh, the amount produced per head um, was actually falling, uh, partly due to the workforce, but also partly due to um, poor machinery, poor infrastructure. We talked last time about how stuff would uh, rot in storage facilities because they weren't able to get it along the impassable road or through the decrepit railway network to towns to um, to sell it. Um, and as a result of all this, there were still shortages of food in the state shops. One attempt to improve production was the introduction of work brigades, um, and they could decide how profit was to be used um, and distributed on collective farms. But in a typical kind of Brezhnev reflection, this experiment was abandoned because officials feared it would lead to a return to family farming if it worked. So this kind of fear of um, going down the line of semi-capitalist reforms is quite a theme really of this period. And we'll come back to that um, uh, a little later on. Brezhnev did also allow peasants to sell the food they grew on their private plots for higher prices. Um, and this uh, is um, interesting, I think. By 1978, the price of food in markets was double the price of food in state shops because of that, um, that allowance. Private plots, this is the interesting bit, private plots made up 1% of cultivated land, but 25% of the produce actually grown, which is extraordinary, really, and, and points to the fact that people were just not working hard in their collective farms for the state. Um, the impact of all this was that uh, Brezhnev, in order to maintain a food supply, um, imported grain from the West and particularly from the US, um, partly to keep prices low, but, but also really to keep make sure there was enough food um, in the country. So moving on to industry, um, oil actually is, is the big thing to talk about here, um, and the big kind of uh, new area of, of economic um, growth, I suppose. Um, and that helped to pay for the grain that, that Khrushchev was buying, particularly from the US, um, as I said. Detente in the 70s also makes things easier, that easing, defrosting of relations between um, the West and the Soviet Union. 
Oil production rose uh, from 243 million tons in 1965 to 603 million tons uh, by 1980. So across 15 years, more than doubles. Um, and uh, that meant they could um, sell that abroad and, and use that money to, to buy the grain, but also it meant they could borrow money from the West based on that income. So it kind of acted as, as collateral. More broadly uh, in the industrial economy, and um, Alexei Kosygin um, attempted some reforms in 1965. You might remember Kosygin from last episode was the um, chief man in the state mechanism. So Brezhnev initially had been the head of the party and it sort of shared power with Kosygin. So here's Kosygin, and a year into their shared um, power, um, introducing economic reforms. Um, the idea was to give incentives to managers to use resources more productively. Uh, to get central planners to take more notice of cost and profit instead of just demanding an increase in quantity. Um, but um, party uh, members were not enthusiastic about this. And maybe this is reflective, again, of the kind of the era. They worried about um, the impact of these things, um, but also perhaps an imp uh, a sign that Brezhnev really um, didn't want Kosygin um, gaining momentum and popularity by successful reforms. And so um, these reforms were gradually watered down. For example, output bonuses were higher than innovation bonuses. So there wasn't really any incentive to, to change things. You just kept doing what you were doing and, and got the money. Um, also, the focus on profit had led some enterprises to um, try and make a few high profit items rather than the plentiful supply of cheap items, which is what people really needed in the country. So it didn't quite work as they'd may be hoped. Uh, Kosygin's reforms were therefore abandoned in 1968 after the Prague Spring, uh, which was a, a rebellion in Czechoslovakia, if you're not aware of that, um, and authority was returned to central planners. So kind of a, a try, an attempt, a, a slight attempt, but really no progress was made. There were no further reforms uh, under Brezhnev and no more growth in the economy by the 1980s. However, Brezhnev still promised a better standard of living um, to the Soviet citizens, and he tried to achieve that by subsidising the price of consumer goods. Even that had problems, though, because there wasn't the enough supply to make those goods available to everybody. Um, and so because of that, Brezhnev starts to tolerate the black economy, sorry, the black market, also called the second economy, never called the second market or the black economy. So the black market or second economy was tolerated by Brezhnev, even though it's illegal, of course, um, because it allowed for this um, rising standard of living, sort of. And the ninth five-year plan actually points to this as well. That began in 1971 and there was a focus on consumer goods. Um, the goals weren't achieved, but as I said, living standards did uh, rise so that by 1980, 85% of families had a television, 70% of families had a washing machine, um, only 9% had cars, but there have been substantial investment in public transport. So probably that wasn't so much of an issue as, as we might think it was. In the 1970s, there was also a bit of a push to try and get um, factories and, and enterprises to use new technology. But, oh, again, in a classic Khrushchev, um, sorry, Brezhnev uh, story, th this didn't work because managers didn't want to risk having lower production while they closed the factory to refit with these new machines. And so the new machines uh, often rusted like in the car park outside because the managers wouldn't close the factory to, to have them um, fitted. And there's also in the 1970s an attempt, a, you know, a renewed attempt like the Kosygin one, to switch to a focus on cost and profit rather than just outfit, output. But because the government set the prices, the prices were therefore guaranteed, there wasn't the same impact on efficiency that you might expect in a more capitalist market-driven economy. So there are these kind of small attempts to try and nudge um, the economy forward and to modernise, but they never really have the impetus to actually change things. Uh, and in 1976, the 10th five-year plan uh, focused on developing natural resources like coal and oil possibly in an attempt that, that recognise actually they weren't getting anywhere with the industrial focus of previous five-year plans. Um, when uh, Brezhnev died, because um, Andropov became leader and he tried to address some of these issues in his brief time um, in power, 
Um, a couple of examples of that were Operation Trawl, T-R-A-W-L, uh, where the KGB visited parks, restaurants and train stations, arresting people who were drunk or absent from work um, in an attempt to improve productivity at work. And this did lead to a reduced consumption of vodka, uh, but an increase in and Andropovka, Andropovka, which was uh, cheap vodka. <laughs> um, the campaign wasn't really followed through with that much enthusiasm and was therefore not very effective. Um, Andropov also tried to run an anti-alcohol campaign um, where workers could be sacked for being drunk at work, go figure, uh, and also fined for damaging equipment or products at work if drunk. Um, again, it didn't really work, and uh, you might know already that Gorbachev has to try a, a similar thing in the mid-80s. By 1985, therefore, overall, I would say uh, things weren't very good in the Soviet economy. Just to reflect briefly upon um, the whole picture of the Soviet economy then as we end, in 1945, this, sorry, not the whole picture, the whole post-war picture, 1945, the Soviet um, Union had the fastest growing economy in the world. Um, in the 1950s, up to 58, so 1950 to 58, the Soviet economy grew at an average of 7.1% per annum. The American economy grew at 2.9% in the same period. Between 7% then, 7.1%. 58 to 64, the Soviet growth was 5.3%. In the 1970s, growth was around 2%. So you can see just the whole post-war picture is of a gradual seizing up uh, of the Soviet economy. Um, part of that, well, there are a number of reasons for that, of course. Um, the, the personalities of the leaders involved, I would say, um, is significant. Their political ambitions are, are significant. Um, that Khrushchev was trying to make his name as a reformer and as a radical. So he tries things. Brezhnev is all about stability and keeping things the same. Um, and that's how he's gained his popularity in his position. And so that's what he does with everything, but particularly with the economy. Um, however, the, the sort of structure of the Soviet economy was uh, laid itself open to that. So the central planning was good for what's called extensive growth um, based on new building, new factories, workshops on mines, that kind of like big picture. Where are we going to do this? How are we going to expand the economy? But it's not so good for what's called intensive growth which was about improving the efficiency of those factories, workshops and mines. So it's good for kind of establishing things, but not so good for running them and improving them. And so the Soviet economy, therefore, never really overcame those inefficiencies, structural inefficiencies um, that the economy had, had uh, developed in the 1930s. Change of continuity, therefore, um, big question here, I guess the you know, change of continuity across the whole picture is that central planning stays in place. Um, the uh, agricultural setup from the 30s stays in place. Um, the reliance on heavy industry stays in place. Low productivity stays in place as well, doesn't it? Um, changes are from the 1930s onwards, there's a, a much bigger shift towards consumer goods and a much more, um, particularly from Khrushchev onwards, a much greater sense of, of the, the necessity of keeping the people happy and providing for them and growth in living standards does improve. Um, the development of natural resources uh, improves. The um, ending of slave labor massively improves. Um, and let's see if we can find something else. Should have written these down. Oh, I suppose well, importing grain uh, is a change as well um, that would be worth uh, worth talking about, and uh, of course, an increasing um, increasing use of technology, even if badly implemented. So overall, a picture of decline, um, and you probably want to have a look at the causes of that decline as well in your revision. Uh, next time, we'll be thinking about or starting to think about. Uh, Theme three, which control of the people. Um, that's the end of themes one and two. I um, hope that's helpful, um, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.